two weeks from today, we will need your prediction on Stipe Miocic and Daniel Cormier for the UFC heavyweight title, which is July 7th. But a couple weeks out, you know both of these guys pretty well. I know you tend to lean towards the bigger guy. You you think size matters, and that has proven to be that has proven to sort of work out in your favor in a lot of matchups where you back the bigger guy. I mean, do you think yeah. size is the biggest factor in this fight between Stipe and DC? Ah, uh, you know, no, I think size is going to play a factor, and obviously, I consider Stipe a friend, so I'm picking Stipe to win. But um, Stipe can also wrestle. You know what I mean? So he's going to have a big range advantage. And I think if uh, DC doesn't get his way with the wrestling and he starts to get a little tired, that would not that would not work in his favor. I, I wouldn't want to be tied with Stipe, you know, right. throwing punches at me. But I think it's going to be the size will be a, a big advantage for a couple of different reasons. But Stipe is also a killer. You know what I mean? Yeah. And uh, there's going to be... I mean, height-wise, there's a huge size advantage. DC is as wide as a as, as a building, though. I mean, his back <laughs> is huge. So, and we've seen him. I don't even think he's ever lost as a heavyweight. He's this undefeated really as a heavyweight. Fight. Yeah, right. I don't think so. I mean, I, I just remember he's not, as we're talking him picking up Josh Barnett and just flinging him around like a rag doll. So, yeah, really curious about this. But he did struggle with John Jones. I don't know if that was the weight, but um, I think it's going to be a similar fight like that. Only. Stipe is probably going to have a little more power, and uh, man, it's going to be a great fight. I'm excited for that fight for sure. I want to read you some quotes from Stephen Wonderboy Thompson, uh, courtesy BJPenn.com. In terms of Darren Till's targeting Thompson's lead knee mm. with these sidekicks, I'm going to read the quote quickly because I want you to hear all of it, okay? Yeah, this yeah. is from Stephen Wonderboy Thompson. I honestly think that strike should be made illegal. It could end somebody's career. You know, Robert Whitaker had to have ACL surgery following his first fight with Yoel Romero due to that particular strike. As you could see, Whitaker made sure to beat Romero to the punch in their second fight. He threw a lot more than he did this time around. It is just a very dangerous technique. I think a lot of fighters throw that strike, but sometimes it is for different reasons. When I fought Jorge Masvidal, he used that same sidekick to the knee, but when George threw it, he was doing so just to keep me away, not in an attempt to injure my knee. And here's the rub. When I was in the cage fighting Till, it felt like, okay, this guy is trying to break my leg. It was like he had intentions of ripping everything out in my knee. That's how I felt anyway, like this dude is really trying to injure me in here. I think it's an ugly strike and that it should be made illegal. Now, I think a lot of people fall on the other side of this equation, right? This is two men fighting in a cage. This is a kick to a lower limb and they don't see an issue with it. Where do you fall on it? Uh, man, I got to tell you, man, I, we're in a sport where, you know, I mean, you could easily say, man, this guy was punching me in the head like he really wanted to knock me out. <laughs> right, you right. know what I mean? So, I mean, I'm not, yeah. it is what it is. I mean, uh, you know, they could do whatever they want with it. But for right now, you know, everybody's looking for an edge. And if that's what you have to do to keep somebody away, I'm not, I'm not going to agree with them on that totally. But, you know, I could see if it, you know, it's almost like, uh, I, I don't know. I mean, like, again, we're in the sport. You know what you signed up for. There's nothing good about a guy crashing his shin into your temple, into the side of your leg, your right, ribs. Right. I mean, it's just is what it is, man. So, I mean, you give Wonder Boy enough time and he'll figure out that that leg won't even be there the next time he sidekicks, I guarantee you. So, right. he might be expressing himself in one way, but, right. like, again, it is what it is. I mean, and he's so gifted that he could do so many things that – you know, I think, um, you know, guys have to guys have to survive in there, too. I mean, Wonder Boys, he's a handful for anybody. Oh. So because he's got great flexibility and he can kick you in the head, you could say, look, this guy's trying to kick me in the temple, render me unconscious with the heel of his foot. And right. It'll never end. So I'm saying for right now, it is it is what it is, man. It's a, it's a tough sport. You know what you sign up for. 
and train appropriately. And again, I think that's something that Wonder Boy will figure out in the future very easily. Yeah, it, it's you know a tri- I mean? it's a tricky one. I mean, we saw Whitaker and the adjustments he made uh, against Romero yeah. in the second fight. He actually was attacking Romero's fight with the exact same kick. Uh, yeah. It seemed like he was looking for revenge there. Oh no, it's he, tough. That 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 right? had the feeling. That had the feeling of revenge too. Yes. Whitaker, yeah, he was. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the tough thing. I mean, the other thing is you can do a knee bar in the UFC. You can try to rip someone's knee open that way. So, uh, and Kenny, the, there's yeah. nothing that happens in that octagon that right. you can't make the case for. I mean, I don't know, man. I'll, I'll, I might take the knee kick over, uh, you know, getting hit with a shin to my temple. Right. I, mean, I don't know. Right. I mean, yeah. that, that's where it gets tricky. I mean, there's sure. nothing. As far as health and safety, there's nothing good going on in there. There's right. nothing. Right. There's nothing good going on. You know, it's a, it's a fight, man. And, well, you know, you make the commitment to walk in there. You know, you got to be prepared to do whatever. Uh, In terms of Stipe and D.C., before we get to the Singapore picks, we've seen a lot of line movement here, Kenny. Mm. Daniel Cormier, at one point about a week ago when I last checked, could be had around plus 165. Now he is plus 210. So Stipe Miacic has gone from minus 185 to minus 265. So that is pretty significant movement, about 80 cents towards Stipe. And in terms of common opponents, they have won Roy Nelson. They beat him on points, both of them. DC has a lot of experience at heavyweight against big men, 13-0, and beat Josh Barnett over 25 minutes. But I brought up the size thing to Ray Longo, and I know you're leaning towards Stipe, and we're not asking you to make a pick here today, but I do think size matters. And DC did have trepidation when he was asked to enter that Strike Force Heavyweight Grand Prix on short notice, you may recall. He stepped in for Alistair O'Reem against Antonio Bigfoot Silva on about four or five weeks' notice. And at the time, he was quoted as saying, I don't know. You know, there's, I'm giving up a lot of height and reach and size, and obviously the results speak for themselves. But I think this is a huge ask, and I think maybe some of the sharp betters out there are starting to back the bigger guy a couple weeks out from this super fight. Yeah, listen, uh, the, Stipe has more advantages than DC. There's no doubt about it. You, you look at not only the fact that DC, uh, that Stipe, sorry, is the larger man, but look at what he's done at heavyweight, man, and all the guys that he's beaten. So. Yeah, I think uh, DC certainly has his hands full. But uh, one thing we can't forget is DC always finds a way to win. Besides John Jones, he has always found a way uh, to win. Um, he is a guy that will always make a fight competitive. We forget in that first fight against John Jones, he did go the distance. Um, and then in uh, and, and I had it three rounds to two for Jones. Um, right. And then in the second fight. Uh, he was doing great in that first round. I thought he won that first round. He was landing some big shots on Jones. Um, and then, of course, we, we didn't know what happened after that when he got caught with that kick. Um, Stipe isn't a big kicker. He doesn't look for a lot of high kicks. Um, I, I think as far as going against a guy who primarily approaches the game with boxing, it allows DC to get in on those legs a little bit easier than going against a guy who likes to knee a lot or kick a lot, um, right. mix things up. But Stipe really isn't that guy. Doesn't mean he's not dangerous. Stipe's still very dangerous. If he lands a shot, he can knock out anybody. Um, so that's where DC really needs to be careful. But I, I like the way that DC matches up against him as far as his ability to get in on those legs, utilize his wrestling, land some shots from the outside. Um, and, and I think DC, DC likes fighting at heavyweight because he feels like he has way more energy. He's happier in his training camp. He feels like he's going to be the faster guy out there. I think he will uh, against Stipe. Um, so there are some definite advantages for DC yeah. heading into this one as well. Uh, a tough fight nonetheless, though. I think you set up a lot of that well in terms of his path to victory. I think in past matchups for DC, there has been a more clear path to victory on paper when you break sure. down the two fighters. And in this particular matchup, you think that even though Stipe hasn't faced, faced a wrestler of DC's quality, 
that is DC going to be able to control this guy on the ground and tire this guy who maybe is not on a Cain Velazquez cardio level necessarily, but look what Stipe did to Francis Ngannou, right? That required a lot of energy, a lot of offense. He might be, though. That's the thing. He might. He might be. I mean, that that fight against Ngannou, uh, you look at his fights against Junior Dos Santos, I mean, just ridiculous. And one thing, too, that we mentioned on the broadcast leading up to the fight between Stipe and Francis Ngannou The Miocic people, you know, they don't speak or toot their 